Hey guys, good morning. If you can hear me and see me loud and clear, type clear in the chat box. Guys, I'm audible. I'm audible. Chat is disabled. Chat is disabled. But I see other people are able to send me message. Okay, so Navid saying chat is disabled. Chat box is disabled. Patanjali is, is able to send me yes, yes. What, why other people saying chat is disabled? Just give me a moment. I'm new to this new tool and optimized disable annotation stop live streaming it is hand full reaction quiz poll stop recording pause backstage okay chat is not disabled guys okay q and a I think okay one second okay maybe chat is disabled guys you can see the message on the recording. Panelist can chat with everyone. Attendee can chat with the panel. Guys, could you please now send me the message in the chat and see if you're able to. Ah, perfect. Super, guys. Super, 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 super. Oh, fantastic. Lovely, 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 lovely. Now I see. Okay. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for making this up. Uh, before we start, okay, I don't want to waste your time because uh, we are very packed agenda for today. Let me know from which part of India you are joining or maybe which part of the world you are joining. Type your state and follow by your country. <coughs> Good morning, Sivans. Pune, Hyderabad, Pune, Chandigarh, Mumbai, Andhra Pradesh, Pune, Bangalore, Maharashtra, Noida, Chennai. Wow, fantastic. Guys, it's going, just blowing my chat. I cannot able to read here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Maharashtra, Telangana, Pune, USA, Bihar. Nigeria, Odisha, Jammu, Odisha, Tripati. Okay, guys, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. I hope you all had your breakfast and you are ready for the next three hours. Okay. And I think I can also able to disable the chat. Let's see. Non. Let me make it non. Guys, could you please type something? Are you able to see the chat? Let me know in the Q&A because I wanted to see, I'm um, get familiar with this new tool. What happened actually, uh, I used to do all this webinar on the Joho, okay? And there was limitation of only 250 people. And I've seen thousand plus registration. So I had to change to this tool. So this tool is new for me. Now I see I cannot see any message. Now again, I'm making to it everyone. Let me know if you can see my screen and type what you see on my screen. Let me share my screen a little bit. Let me know what you see on my screen. Roadmap. Perfect guys. Super. Super. Thank you so much. Okay guys, welcome once again and let's get started. Now let me quickly hide the chat. Stop the chat. So it won't distract me here. So you can, I can give my 100%. Okay. So guys, here is a full pack agenda for the next six hours. How it's going to be happen. Let's have a quick look here. So 
11 to 11 15 it was supposed to be the uh kick off okay so i reserved 15 minutes so we can have some chit chat here then from the sad 11 15 to 11 30 uh, we are going to start with the cloud fundamental i am going to talk about the cloud data center ability zones aws regions why you should select any aws region then age locations and local zones then we'll move to the second part getting started with the aws i will explain about aws account and what is the root user then 11 30 to 1 30 aws identity and access management IAM user group policy and types of the policy that's most important we need to understand then 1 30 to 2 o'clock aws storage service okay so s3 intro then bucket object and storage classes then we will take around or uh, two hours of the break okay because when you're consuming all this knowledge you need some break then 2 30 to 4 we have the lunch break you will stretch your leg, have some good food. And again, we'll start from 4. 4 to 7. Okay. So 4 to 5, networking and virtual private cloud VPC. So I'll talk about IP address, VPC, public subnets, private subnet, IGW, RT, and NAT gateway. Then we'll jump into the next part, AWS Compute Services, 4 to 5. EC2 instance, then what we need to launch EC2 instance, like AMI, security group, EBS, user data, metadata. Then we move to the uh, database, that second module of this whole day webinar, RDS, different types of database engine, then multi-agent, read replica, subnets group. And at the last, we'll go on how we make, based on our all learnings, how we make our application an infrastructure high available, okay? So launch template, auto-scaling, auto-scaling group, auto-scaling policies and all. And then we will done for the day. And then I will give you some assignments. Okay. And further studies material and all. Guys, if you all sounds good, if you are excited, type boom in the chat box. Wow, fantastic. Yeah, guys, you can also use the emoji on your screen. I see. Thank you so much. And let me quickly check how many people we have. We have 170, 69 people. It's sad to see 170. Now I see number is increasing. I was expecting 500 plus people. Because of that, I have done another investment of around $316. <laughs> and I got this uh, webinar link. So this uh, Joho subscription for the next two months. So I can give you people as much as I can. Can I get certificate? Yes, you can get certificate. I will tell you how to get certificate. Okay. I'm also going to give you the learning materials again. So people, guys, couple of things. Okay. So people who stay till end of this whole six hours. Okay. I'm going to give you again around seven hours of the learning content. Okay. Recorded content. You can go ahead again, learn from there. Second, also I'm going to give you you also get certificate. I will tell you how to get certificate. Okay. And also hands-on. Okay. How do you implement all these learnings? Again, I will tell you what will be the next steps and when it will be our next session. Okay. So that's all plan. Guys, if you are ready to start, give me thumbs up. Okay. Or type again excited in the chat box or EX in the chat box and we'll get started. Super, fantastic guys. Thank you so, so much. I see number is increasing 186 people now. So let's get started without wasting any time. Thank you guys. I'm disabling the chat so we can focus here. So let me share my screen once again. And what I'll do, I will quickly go ahead and take this on the other screen. And so I will keep close eyes here, what I am covering here. Okay. Just give me a moment. Just a second. Guys, how many of you are familiar with the AWS, AWS accounts? 
type me in the chat box again i'm opening the chat box type me if you know identity okay it, you have aws accounts and you are a little bit familiar with the aws concepts me 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 so many people anyways guys great let's get started again disabling the chat and give me a moment and white box white board guys let me in the chat box what you see on my screen whiteboard if whiteboard type w perfect super guys i got couple of confirmation that's more than enough thank you so much so yes disable chat <clears throat> okay guys so there's so many things i can talk about the aws why aws why aws is the great feature and all let's not go there but let's directly jump on the aws to do anything in your aws account to do anything on aws you need aws account then what is aws account aws account is a container is a container where you can go ahead and create aws resources and you deploy your application so this is container where you all application resources stay there now how you get this aws account to get this aws account you need three things first things you need email id unique email id the unique id you didn't use earlier second you need a phone number then third you need a credit card so when you use this phone number so aws will create a user for you in this account user in this account okay and this user is called root user guys this is aws specific term so do remember so when you use this email id with this email id a user will get created in this aws account and this is called root user i will tell you what is root user very soon but again you have attached your credit card to create this account you need credit card okay but you ask between aws has aws free tier but why do we again i need credit card okay you can go ahead and use aws services that fall into the free tier okay and <clears throat> what is this different aws free tier i will send you one video in the lunch break okay you can get idea from there but if xyz reason if you exceed the free tier limit you have to pay the bill for that okay so that's not free so you have to make sure you are only using free tier for that you need to attach credit now coming back to the user which got created when you use this email id this is called root user and root user is most powerful identity in your account then you see your identity right identity so this is root user this identity in your aws account and identity is nothing but it's me it's you right it's only person and anyone anything need access of something this called identity right so this is more powerful identity and he has all permission in your aws account he do anything okay so as this is most powerful user an identity in your account so it's not recommended to use your root user for your daily uses so what we will be doing you will be creating another user in your aws account which has less privilege less permission and this is called iam user then what is iam iam is the aws service okay now let's understand what is iam guys if this is clear so far okay type c in the chat box i enable the chat option perfect super thank you guys thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you <clears throat> okay now 
we have this AWS account and in this account we have a root user and we know we are not going to use this root user so we are going to create and we understood we are going to create I A M user and this I am user is nothing but it you okay you created one user it has the less permission then what is this IAM IAM stand for identity and access management identity and access management what is identity who is identity me is identity right when i am talking to you here you say praveen right when i'm accessing my aws account okay when i'm accessing my net banking i'm giving my username and password right so it authenticates this is the right person and this is the who is the praveen right when you go in your office you use your office batch right and then we use this batch to swap in on the card sorry on the door of your office is say yeah this is the right person he has access of this building right so you are one identity so we can create identity user person for your aws account in aws account to manage your aws resources so what i am do it's minus identity number of people who can access your aws account then identity and access management then it's do two important things once is to access okay for the access we have two things one is called authentication authentication and then authorization okay so once we create identity so this identity need to be authenticated he is the right person for that we will be creating username and password for him okay so it will authenticate user once he will authenticate then it will authorize what this user can do right if you take an example if you go in the office so when you swap your id card to office door right means it got authenticated you go inside the aws in your aws sorry in your office right but you cannot go in finance department you cannot go in the hr department because you are not authorized okay so again what is do is authorized what you can do in your aws account for that we use a identity and access management feature called policy okay <clears throat> now we will understand what is policy guys if this is clear so far give me a thumbs up what identity do let me know in the chat box i am do three things okay first things we create identity we manage identity okay who access your aws resources second it's authenticate user with username and password and also this another way i will tell you very soon then third okay is authorize who will do what and how it authorize is authorized with a policy okay then what is this policy policy is json template where we define who do what who do what okay <clears throat> now let's directly go on aws console okay and see this user okay and these policies so let me switch my screen and let me know in the chat box what you see on my screen i have multiple screens so wanted to make sure you are at the right screen aws console super now how do we find AWS services? People who don't know, okay, once you have AWS account, okay, either you can go and search here, okay, in the search box, IAM, okay, now you see the service here, or you can also go and see services from this latest visited services, or maybe you can also see all list of the services over here, 
okay so for me it's easy to go ahead and search here okay and now click iam now this is im dashboard here we see we have the user okay and you see we have one user called sonali let me switch my account let me go to the another account where i have already some more user okay now in this account if you go here we see we have the user we have three user okay how to create user is very simple click here give the name of the user let's say demo okay then do you want to give him aws management console access what is aws management aws management console is nothing but this console what i'm you are accessing here seeing here okay this is called aws management console okay and if you don't select this it will give programmatic access okay i will explain what is programmatic access okay and then you can get auto generated password or you can give your custom password then go to the next okay so let me go for the auto generated password and then go to the next and then we need to attach the permission see try to understand when we create any user in aws account then user don't have any permission by default he cannot do anything he can't do anything in your aws account so we need to attach the permission so this three way to give him the permission okay one is the group i will explain what is the group okay you can copy permission from any existing user so if you let's say florian is the administrator and this new user is going to act as a admin okay so you can copy permission from the florian and other you can attach policies directly from here okay then let's select the admin for okay admin and go to the next and just you can review everything and just click create user and it will be done okay now let's not create this because already have some user cancel it yes cancel it now you know what is user how to create user right <clears throat> next we need to attach policy how this policy looks like now let's quickly look here okay if you go here in the policy here you see the policy okay let's create a policy and go on the json okay and let's remove this now you see this policy okay now give me a moment uh, i need me i need to open my pencil epic pen because i want to sketch on the dashboard okay i got my pencil okay so guys our policy looks like this looks like this just give me a moment our policy looks like this okay now try to understand this as i said this is json template okay and here we have three important things we need to understand first is the effect yeah effect effect is allow or it could be deny okay so either you want to allow access to your user or not okay allow means you want to allow deny means you don't want to allow okay next is the action action is what action he will do okay he will create let's say ec2 instance is called the virtual machine i will explain or he can create a s3 bucket or he will list a rds service okay so what action we can allow from there and next is the resource on which resource okay he is allowed to stop let's say ec2 instance called virtual machine okay which which project right so which resource so that's something we can we can add here okay so this is very simple guys if this is clear give me a thumbs up what is seed seed is the unique id seed is the unique id for this statement okay when we create a policy okay so this is one statement right here we'll have the another statement we'll have the another statement okay 
one rule here another rule here another rule here so each rule need a unique id okay so this is called sit okay now guys this policies is three types two types okay let me cancel this let's go back now let's look one real policies okay so let's go ahead and here let me open one policy let's go to the json sorry permission go to the json okay now here you see let me explain guys quickly here okay so you see we have this statement right and here effect okay what is effect effect is allow so whomever okay so maybe praveen maybe rohit maybe sonal okay whomever i'm going to attach this policy so allow is effect he is allowed to take action what action you see here we have the list of the action he can create a log group he can create a log stream he can put a log event okay and then which resource okay here this is arn okay don't worry about that so on this particular resource okay in code build okay on this particular resource he is allowed to do all this action okay so this is how it looks like now let's look at how many types of the policy as i said we have two types of the policy one called AWS managed policy, another is custom managed policy. Okay. So here you see this all policy with this icon, yellow icon. This is AWS managed policy. Okay. And here, if you select this, this is all custom managed policy, miss customer managed policy. So I have created these policies. Now you will ask Parveen, what is difference between AWS managed policy and customer managed policy. AWS managed policy is policy which managed by AWS. So imagine, okay. EC2 is the one of the service I will explain today. So imagine this EC2 service, okay, you want to give access to your any administrator to create EC2 instances, right? So you have to give some permission, correct? And what AWS do, they keep adding new feature on top of that. Okay. So, if AWS adding new feature for this EC2 instance, right? If you use EC2, AWS managed policy, they will go ahead and also add this feature permission to the policy. Okay. In case if you manage policy, you will create your custom policy, then you are responsible for that. So you understand you have to manage it all the time. So this is the difference. <clears throat> okay. Guys, it's clear. Give me a thumbs up. Perfect. Now, this AWS manage policy is basically two types. Okay. If you go here, I will quickly explain here. Okay. You see AWS manage job function and AWS manage try to understand so basically what happened when you are working for in any organization you are doing some role right maybe as administrator maybe as a developer as a tester as an auditor so this is where you can go and use aws managed job function policy you see here administrator access right billing access dba access data scientist access so this is role specific permission okay whereas Another you see AWS managed. So this is AWS service specific permission. So if you see here, right, Alexa for business full access. Alexa is the service. For this service, we are giving full access, right? If you scroll down, you see Amazon App Stream PC access, right? Amazon Athena full access. So this is service specific access. If you want to give any person any specific service access, so you can use AWS managed policy. Guys, if this is clear, give me a thumbs up. Guys, don't ask your question now. Okay, I'm going to open the QA, then you can ask all your questions. So I will request I write down your all questions, okay, and ask in the last. 
perfect super now let me go back to the slide okay and let me know what you see on the slide if you see the my slide type as in the chat box so i know you are seeing the right screen perfect super now guys try to understand here so we have user and this user if you want access of aws account he need policy so imagine if your organization has 1000 people and this all people want access of okay aws accounts so what we will be doing ideally we'll go ahead and create this thousand user in your aws account right <clears throat> then to each user you will go and attach this policy there would be the case right in this thousand people people are doing some sort of the common work right so maybe these two people are belongs to the any organization so any application and they are administrator admin and this person is the tester right so this thousand people could be doing some sort of similar work right so if you don't want to attach this policy to each people what you can do you can go ahead and create call iam i am group okay so here we have you can get i am group for the admin i am group for the tester so now instead of attaching this policy to this individual people we can attach to this group okay and if you add these two people to this admin group right so this both people have access of the policy which you have attached so this will simplify your work okay guys if this is clear give me a thumbs up Perfect, super. <clears throat> Guys, there is other concept in AWS as well. I am called IAM role, but let's not go there. Okay, so that's a little bit deep concept. Okay, now let's move to the okay cloud fundamental. Okay, or AWS infrastructure. <clears throat> so when we are creating any AWS resources, okay. So let's say we got this AWS account. When you are creating any resources, any services in AWS account, okay, this is running from somewhere. This is running from some hardware, right? And this all hardware, this all servers are in AWS data center. So, like other on-premises or cloud providers, okay, AWS has the data center. And data center is nothing but a big building, okay. A special type of building where they have to make sure electricity is available all the time okay cooling is available and all big big machine big big servers are there and from where this all aws services are running like i a m just i have explained okay now what aws do aws organize these data centers together okay and this when they organize this data center together, then this is, let me erase this. When they organize this data center together, this is called availability zone. So AWS organize this data centers, okay? And this data centers, then it's become ability zone, okay? And AWS has multiple ability zone okay so if this is one ability zones they will have another ability zones okay again they will have the data center over here now you say Praveen, why they have this multiple ability zones okay this ability zones help us make our application infrastructure high available okay 
Now let's understand this. So let's say here we have the one AZ, okay, another AZ ability join and another AZ ability joins, okay. And we know this is nothing but collection of the data center, okay. So when you run your application from here, okay, let's see we are running this application from here. If X, Y, Z region, something goes wrong, this whole AZ goes down, then your application is down, right. So how do you make your application is running if still, okay, if there is down and something wrong in this ability zones, in this data center, okay. So you can create copy of your application in another ability zones. So this is purpose of ability zone to making your application and infrastructure high available. This couple of things you need to keep in mind, okay. This edged are around 50 miles away from each other. So it's mean if any natural disaster happen, right? Flood, fire, right? So it's not going to impact another ability zones. Okay. Second things. Again, this is connected with high fiber cable internally. Okay. So they have millisecond of millisecond of latency okay so if you are replicating your data and application from one edge to the another okay they will, will have very less latency okay so again that is the good thing <clears throat> it will help make your application okay as reliable okay as possible then this collection of ability zone made called aws region okay and as of now aws has 32 regions and the reason is if you think from as of now what i've talked right a reason is collection of ability zones ability zone is collection of the data center right data center where we have aws services okay ability zones collection of the data center which we use to make our application infrastructure high available now this collection of ability zone is aws region and aws region is nothing but geographical location geographical location where aws has these data centers so as of now aws has 32 regions name of these regions like Mumbai, AWS Mumbai has one region, Hyderabad has one region, Tokyo is one region, Stockholm is one region, Ireland is one region. Now if you see this name is somewhere on the globe, right? It means AWS has the data center at 32 locations, okay? If this is clear so far, give me a thumbs up. Now questions comes, why do we and what should be different criteria to use this AWS regions and select AWS regions, right? First criteria for selecting different AWS region is latency. Guys, try to understand. Let's say if your customer applications user is from the India, right? It means if your application is hosted running somewhere in the India, they will have the low latency, right? If you put same application in the US, right, then there will be the latency, right? So you need to think which region you will select, okay, for your customer application, for your application, okay, based on the latency. So you should put always select data center this as closest as to your application user so that should be your first consideration i hope guys you are making note of it okay now second second is compliance okay you know gdpr compliance right gdpr compliance is if you are getting information and data of european union people then you cannot take this data outside of European Union, okay? It means 
your data center must be in the Europe somewhere. Similar, okay, Singapore government has also policies, okay. India government has also, also policies, right. So, if you go in the banking sector, they will say you cannot take data of Indian consumer and put in the other country, okay. So, compliance could be the second reason you will be selecting where your regions will be. Third important point, okay. Okay, third important point, AWS service availability. Guys, they have 32 AWS regions, but AWS service is not available in all AWS regions, okay. So, you have to double check, okay, which service your customer is going to use and service is available in which AWS regions. So, AWS has five to six regions when they come up with the new service, they will roll out first, okay. So, in the European Union, Ireland is the region. Okay, in US, North Virginia is the region. So, your customer is innovating a lot using all latest services. So, you should be using those regions. Fourth important point is cost. So, AWS regions varies cost perspective as well. If your user is okay, so you know, Miss India is a little bit low cost country, right, as compared to the US and the Europe, right. And when this low cost country and continent and the state, right, there is AWS get this hardware, right, this infrastructure, okay, at low cost, okay. Then also, we also get this service at the low cost, okay. So, this could be also one of the region. Guys, so this is the fourth region you should be selecting, AWS regions. Clear so far what is data center, what is ability zones, why should you select ability zones, why should you select regions, give me a thumbs up. Okay, some people are asking, is this webinar is getting recorded, can you get access of it? Guys, no, this webinar is getting recorded, but I'm not going to share the recording of this, okay. So you have to stay till the end if you want to know and you are, I hope you are making note of it. But what I am going to do, at end of this session, I am going to give you around 7 hours of the content that you can go ahead and watch. Okay. So you have to stay till the end to get that recorded course. Okay. Recorded materials. Okay guys. <clears throat> so, now <clears throat> AWS regions, ability zones, data centers. Okay, one thing is guys try to understand. Okay, let me stop sharing my screen so you can see me on the full screen. Okay, so as AWS has only as of now we see 32 AWS regions, right? But there could be some application, okay? It's need even ultra second latency, ultra millisecond latency, right? Let's say if you're doing some video encoding. Okay, processing, maybe some multimedia gaming applications. So, this needs ultra seconds latency, right? Millisecond latency. So, it means you need this data center even closer to your customer, right? To your user. For that, you can use AWS local zone. So, AWS has, again, concept of the local zone, but this is a small data center. It's not like AWS regions. They have the multiple ability zones, okay, and big, big data center. This is a small data center where you will not got, get all AWS services. You will get services like compute, storage, networking, and database. And that's something you can check from the AWS documentation, okay? So, as of now, AWS has 35 local zones, okay? So, that's something you can also use. Now, let me quickly show you some websites where you can get all these details. Guys, let me know in the chat box, okay, what you see on my screen. Just give me a moment. 
let me allow the chat as let me know what you can see my on my screen browser perfect so go type aws global infrastructure okay open this link and here see aws has 32 regions 102 ability zones okay and 550 point of presence okay that i didn't explain let me explain this okay what is this point of presence this point of presence is called edge location e d g e edge location okay so <clears throat> what we understood here right so we have aws regions where we have this computer storage networking and all AWS services, right? Now, if you want to extend this more closer to your user, we use AWS local zones, right? Now, 32 and around 35 local zones. Then there could be case, okay? Let me explain a little bit. Let me go down. Okay. So, there could be here, okay, you have application. Let's you are running this application from the Ireland. Mm. Just give me a moment. Somehow my pencil is not working. Okay, so let's say this is Ireland where from where you are running your application. Okay, and maybe your application is a global application, right? Here you have let's say some uh, videos. Okay, and you are streaming those videos to the different corner of the world. Okay, this is Australia, this is the Japan. Okay, and this is the India, right? So when this users accessing your application, right? then how data go to there okay to them so if person accessing this application from the australia and your application is hosted over here so data will go something like this maybe it will go here it will go here then from here it will go here because data go through the internet and it will try to find the nearest path okay so there is a different hope okay from where this data will go okay it won't go the straight okay so what will happen the user will see some latency here so if you want to serve this media file faster or maybe cast nearest to the user okay for that we use aws service called okay for that we use aws infrastructure called edge location okay edge location and aws has 500 50 edge locations and this is nothing but again a small data center where AWS has service called cloud front cloud and front and cloud front is the CDN service cloud front is the CDN service where AWS hosts their cloud front service cloud front service what is do it's cast data okay so when user will access this video it will cast the data over here okay and if another user is accessing then data get delivered from the nearest data center okay and another benefit this data instead of it was flowing like this right it was flowing like this so now instead of taking this path it will use aws global network backbone okay your data will directly flow from here to here okay so this is two benefits of using edge location guys if this is clear give me a thumbs up super now Now you see this is all the location where AWS has the regions, okay, 
and we have 35 AWS local zones. What is a wavelength? Let's not go there. Okay. Now, here local zones, you can go ahead again, find the wave page for the AWS local zones. Okay. So if you have this kind of requirement, you can go ahead and ask to your customer. Okay. Suggest them AWS in moment, AWS local zones. Open here. Now you will see the list of the all places where AWS has local zone. No, this is not the right place. Here, one second. Here, locations. Okay. If you scroll down, you see here. This is all place where AWS local zone is available. Okay. So AWS has local zone in the Delhi. If you're talking about the Delhi, okay. Also in the Kolkata as well. Okay. Okay, guys. So that's pretty much about AWS. Okay, let me quickly review our agenda where we are. <clears throat> so this is 8, 9, 20 for me around. We are from the 15 minute in this meeting. And let's see if we are on the right track. So we covered cloud data center ability zones, regions, why AWS regions, uh, age locations, local zones, right? So we are on the right time okay now we also understood aws accounts and the root user we also understood identity and access management i am user group policies okay we also understood types of the im policy managed policy managed policies so two types okay aws service based policies then job role based policies okay then also customer managed policy now we will jump into the AWS storage. But before that, I would like to take question from you guys. Okay. Now let me stop sharing my screen. I'm going to take question from you. So guys, let me know if you have any question in the chat box here. So what is local zone and edge edge? Both are the different Okay, Ravi Shankar is asking, what is the difference between local zone and the edge? Guys, local zone is complete different entity like AWS region. Okay, so AWS has 32 regions. Then other than that, they have 35 local zones. Okay, so that what we can use. Now, ability zones is part of your AWS region. Okay, so you cannot use ability zone as alone. Okay, to host your application. Okay, you have to select AWS region. I will explain you, show you. Then within that region, okay, you can use ability zones. Okay, it's not entity that you just you can just use out of box. Okay, for that you need to select AWS region. Okay, then ability zones when you design your infrastructure. Whereas AWS local zone is complete different entity. Okay, you can use it alone. What is edge location? Can we cover? Okay, so it's as I explained, edge location is the again a small small data center where AWS has their CDN service cloud front. Okay, where we can cast our data. Okay, static data like images, videos, maybe static files okay we can host over there cast over there aws has 550 plus edge locations edge in the region or region is in the edge ajay edge is in the region ability zone ability zone is within the region okay within a region okay we create a ability zone so don't worry i will explain this concept in the networking part What is managed service? Okay, guys, this is a different concept. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Subham is asking, what is managed service? So, in AWS has concept of the managed service. Okay. Where AWS take care of your, okay, take care of infrastructure of that application, patching of the application, backup of the application, making it high available and also fault tolerant. So this everything will be taken care by AWS. So that's called managed service. Take an example. 
if you are going to host your WordPress application in the AWS, so what you do? You create a virtual machine, okay? Then you host your application, right? Then you make it high available. You think about the fault tolerant, taking care of the patching and all, okay? So this is your responsibilities. If you don't want to do that, okay? Then you can use AWS managed service for that. How local zone is connected to the AZ? Amar is asking. See, local zone is not connected with the AZ. It's completely different entities. Okay. But one thing, very good point I can tell you here. You can extend your AWS regions networking with local zones. Okay. So it could be in the within the same network when you design your network i will explain okay then you can extend your one region network to your local zone so you feel like this within the same network satyajit asking do we get a good hands on linux networking basic programming kitna question push diye bhai satyajit okay Stay end of the session, okay, I'm going to tell you what exactly you need to become a cloud engineer, okay, and every course what you need, you can get free of cost. Again, you can go and uh, find on my YouTube channel, I have already posted, okay, how to become a successful cloud engineer, okay, and what you need. I have explained very well and how to get all these free courses, I have explained over there. Kishore Kiran is saying, so local zone can be used for ultra low latency for video game ETC. Exactly, you are right. Nabya, you are right. Okay, Santosh again asking, can you explain difference between managed, okay, managed and customer managed and AWS managed policy guys so when you create a policy this JSON template okay and give access of different resources okay so this is called customer managed so you are managing it okay and AWS has also policies they created for you okay so this is called AWS managed policy okay what is difference difference is to maintainability okay if you create it you have to maintain it Can I have two AWS account? You can have hundreds of AWS accounts. Okay. But you have to pay for that. There is a billing associated, associated with it. Okay. Can you explain me? Guys, let me send you some videos. Okay. If you don't know, uh, on my YouTube channel, if you go on my, go on YouTube channel, one person is asking, explain me IAS and PASS. Let me send you some videos link here, guys, so you can use it. So, so person who want to become AWS cloud engineer and you want to know what is the roadmap, okay, go ahead and watch this video. I'm sharing in the chat box. <clears throat> Okay, and what is IAS and PASS? IAS and PASS. I have explained this very well. Again, I am sharing a link of this video here. So you can go ahead and watch from my YouTube channel. Okay. Deepak, what's the video I sent to you? How to become a cloud engineer? You can get answer from there. I've sent YouTube channel link, not Mr. Yes, in the link in the chat, you can get it from there. Can we create your own policies? Yes, we can create your own policies. Okay, guys, I don't see any more question. Okay, so shall we get started? Give me thumbs up. Type boom in the chat box if you want to get started. Okay. 
okay super perfect okay guys now let me share my screen let me know what you can see in the screen in the chat box road map perfect super okay guys now let me share my screen now my slide deck okay and okay so guys let's try to understand the journey okay when you are uh maybe moving from on premises to the cloud okay or when you are going to use the cloud okay so what you will be doing first you will be creating your aws account right <clears throat> then you will use iam service to manage identity in your aws account and give permission to these people to access your aws account okay now your application will have a lot of data okay will have a lot of data so if you want to run your application in the cloud so you have to move this data inside aws account right so let's understand what is different types of data could be okay so basically there is three types of data most of customer has okay one is called block storage okay data okay another is called file storage data then call object storage data now let's try to understand this one by one what is block storage see this block storage file storage and object storage is the storage this name of the storage comes the way it's store your data and give you access of this data try to understand this different types of the storage names comes and this all names has some meaning right so this names comes the way it store your data and the way it's give you access of this data okay so block storage is the storage when you store your data here it's store your data in the block wise in the block wise when you store any data okay if i get say this data is storing in this block storage it will store your data in the block wise it means when you try to access this data this data from here as it is stored in the block wise okay you would be able to get this each and every piece of this data from here you can get this data okay and you able to edit it you'll be able to update it update it okay so block storage store your data in the block wise is as is stored in the block wise is give you feature to edit this each block of your data okay so what is example of the block storage where you use your operating system use block storage on your laptop when you store install the database okay and you see in the database if you are running coming from the dba side right we able to get one one data from there right one row one column we get the data so it's store your data in the block storage okay it's use block storage technique so this is example of the block storage what is file storage file storage store your data in the folder and in the hierarchy 
okay so if you take an example in your company somebody says hey go ahead and put this file in this folder okay and i will access from there so that is file storage you can store the data okay and anyone within the network they will be able to access those data so this is called nas n a s network attached storage okay and it's store your data in folder and files okay so your organization will have maybe block storage as well as file storage that you want to move to the cloud that's why it's important to understand this different storage another type of data could be where is work on write once read many format okay so you want to upload the data i want to create this data okay you don't want to update it frequently okay so write once and read many okay example could be a invoice company invoice right you have this file okay and you said uploaded somewhere then many department will access it one example second example if in the e-commerce business right so let's say you placed an order of your phone right so once order is get placed then this data okay go to the multiple department okay shipping department okay invoicing department inventory department product department because they need to update their inventory they need to update the product but they cannot update this data right so this is right once and read many okay so this kind of data is called object storage okay now you understood okay you will have these three types of data for your customer now we'll try to understand okay what is the different storage we can use in the aws cloud guys if this is clear give me a thumbs up let me enable the chat box type clear in the chat box perfect guys super okay, there is two questions okay one question is can you explain the object storage again see object storage when you write data once okay and it access from the many people okay and even many times okay and you don't want to change it and even if you want to change this okay then you have to download it edit it again you have to upload it okay so you cannot do the in place edit in place update that what we can do in the block storage block storage mein kya hota hai ki hum data ko in place update kar sakte hain theek hai na jaise file hum file open kiye right file hum update kar sakte hain in place right but object storage mein aisa nahi hota hai is clear okay what is difference between block and the file storage see again file storage mein kya block mein kya hota hai you are able to update your data okay in place in file storage mein okay you cannot update in place okay you can also update in place okay but this is the way it's get store your data is store data in folder and the file hierarchy okay in the block storage operating system how is to store data you don't know right internally is stored in each each block your database mysql postgres how is it storing the data is storing the block wise okay but in the file storage okay you will be folder within this folder we have the multiple folders right then files okay so your data is stored into the file way file structure <coughs> okay guys now let's understand what is different service we can use respective of this storage so let me erase this something for me here so let me erase this
so aws has the solution for all this storage okay when we are moving to the cloud now let's understand which storage we can use for which service we can use for which storage okay <clears throat> so for block storage we can use aws service called e b s elastic block storage guys write it down okay for the block storage we can use service called ebs elastic block storage for the file storage we use aws service called efs or fsx okay elastic file storage okay and this is for linux linux operating system and this one is for window for the window operating system okay and for object storage we will use aws service called s3 simple storage service okay now let's go and start with s3 okay and s3 is the object storage and this is one of the most popular service in aws s3 again stands for simple storage service guys if it is clear give me some th thumbs up <clears throat> maybe you can take a screenshot of this as well okay guys yeah, enable the chat let me know if this is clear we know these three types of the storage block storage file storage object storage for the block storage we use aws service called ebs for the file storage efs and fsx efs is for the window fsx for the sorry efs is for the linux and fsx for the window and for object storage we'll use aws service called s3 <clears throat> okay guys so now let me disable the chat and let's understand how s3 stores our service okay let me click this let me clear this little bit guys i hope you have the pen and pencil paper and pen and you are making a lot of notes here okay now to store a data in s3 okay first of all you need to create bucket guys these are aws a specific term okay you need to remember it okay so to store your data in s3 you need to create bucket bucket is nothing but a container guys when i'm saying container don't think like this is the container okay docker container this is nothing but a box a container where you can store your data so bucket is nothing but a container so you have to create this bucket and this bucket name need to be globally globally unique it means if i created a bucket name with the prabin misra okay so you cannot create bucket mahesh cannot create bucket with the mahesh with the prabin misra okay kamal cannot create bucket name with the prabin misra if Sub subham yadav create bucket name with the subham yadav okay then again imran cannot create bucket name okay with the subham yadav so this bucket name is the globally unique okay it's also mean this s3 is the global service s3 is the global service now try to understand so aws service has the scope guys try to understand 
AWS service has the scope. Okay. So when you create the service, some service scope is the global. It means the service is globally available. Like S3. IAM is the global service. Okay. In your, you will create in your account. Okay. You can access from any AWS regions. Okay. Route 53. Cloud front. No, cloud front is not a no, CloudFront is not a global service. Okay. CloudFront. Sorry, guys, getting confused. I need to double check. Okay. So these are the global service. Okay. <clears throat> now, EC2. EC2 is the regional service. When you create this service, you have to first select the region. Okay. RDS is the database service. When you have to create this RDS service, you have to select the region. Okay. So these are the regional service. I hope you got this difference between the global service and the regional service. Guys, if this is clear, give me a thumbs up. It's important concept you need to understand. Perfect. Super. Now. And here in S3, you can store okay any amount amount of data you can store any amount of data okay so it's mean on limited limited data literally it means you can store unlimited data in the s3 now another question is come in mind Prabhu, how big data you can store inside this s3 bucket right maximum size of a data could be 5 terabyte imagine a 5 terabyte big data you are able to store inside your s3 bucket okay so 5 terabyte of data in a big data you are able to store in s3 okay and once you store all this data in S3 bucket, you will be able to access this from anywhere. This data, once you store, you will be able to access from anywhere, any point of time. <coughs> now, AWS has very important feature, okay, called durability for this s3 bucket data is provides 11 nines of durability means if you are storing 10,000 data okay in 10 million year only one data get lost is provide 11 nines of durability then how this magic happen okay let's understand this so I hope this is guys all clear so far. Okay. So bucket, bucket is nothing but the container where we can store the data. This name is the globally unique. Okay. You can store any amount of data means a limited data. A data size could be five terabyte, right? And S3 is the global service. Correct. Now we are going to understand what this durability mean and how AWS achieve this higher durability. Okay. So what happened when we store any data in the S3. Okay. And we know AWS S3 has the concept called ability zones. Right. So AZ1, AZ2 and AZ3. Okay. So what happened when you store let's say you have this data you can store this data over here this data what aws do aws take this data and they will put in this three ability zones within this aws region okay this aws regions if xyz region okay a data from this ability zones let's say got deleted okay it will replicate this data back over here okay and this is keep doing so keep checking okay 
the if any data let's from here is getting deleted okay again it will either replicate from here or get replicated from here so one thing keep in mind guys when you store your data in s3 bucket okay and s3 bucket is the global service but when we store a data data you have to select the region okay and your data will remain in that region and this get replicated in this this three ability joins to make is this 11 9 durability okay guys if this is clear give me a thumbs up how it achieve achieves 11 9 of durability perfect now we know buckets and when we store this data in s3 okay then this data okay guys try to understand okay now when we store this data in the s3 okay this this is the data right and this data you have this data and from here you are uploading this data here right so this data in aws called object this data in s3 call object so this is aws specific concepts okay you need to remember so this data in s3 called object guys now we will do some hands on okay i will directly take you to the aws dashboard okay and then we will see how to create a bucket how to up upload the object now i'm sharing my screen once again and guys let me know what you can see on my screen <laughs> browser iam console super perfect guys now let's go here okay <clears throat> and to find this s3 service we'll type s3 and here s3 is here okay i will open this It's not didn't get opened i need to try once again again i can type from here because this is something i have favorite it okay now i am in my s3 console okay and from here you see i have already some buckets here okay you see this is the buckets i have 12 buckets okay and if, now if i need to create a bucket i will go here create bucket click and here i need to give name okay so let's give here name maybe rajesh rajesh jan is here okay now aws you see this is the global service okay that's why we see here global but when we create this bucket our bucket is the regional service regional scope okay so we need to select the region where i want to create this bucket okay so i'll go in the mumbai okay then let me scroll down quickly and let me create the bucket now you see bucket rajesh chan got created okay now if rajesh will go and try to create a bucket he will be not able to create this because somehow this bucket name is not present now let's try with a different name okay let's type here Praveen okay and Mumbai region go ahead and click here now we are getting this error bucket name with the same name is already exist okay so someone already created now if you go here this guys one thing try to understand if you go here there's no bucket name with the Praveen in this my account right you have the prebin hyphen something right prebin demo something prebin something but i don't have bucket name with the prebin you see here okay so someone else already created this bucket okay now that is clear now let's go we have created this bucket right and this bucket we can upload the data okay so within that we can create a folder okay folder is just see actually this is not a folder in the s3 there is no concept try to understand it, guys as i said it's not a file s3 is the object storage it's not a file storage 
but here you see Prabhupada, then why this is folder? Guys, they are calling this as a folder, okay, but this is not a folder. This is just a name space to organize your data. This is not a folder. This is name space. Okay. So you can go ahead and give the name to organize your data. Okay. But this is not actually folder. So let me cancel this here. And let's go ahead and upload the data here. Okay. Then you scroll down, you see calling add files or add a folder. Okay. I want to add a one file. Okay. Then scroll down, you go in the download and here, let me download these, upload this. Okay. And go ahead and upload. <clears throat> it will take a couple of seconds. Now you see this data is got uploaded successfully. Okay. And here I see the data. Let me click it. Now we see this data, we see all details about this data, who is the owner, okay, this is in this specific region and I can see this URL of the bucket, okay. Guys, this is very important things keep in mind. Now, this is the unique URL, this is unique URL, this is unique URL, okay, anyone on the internet, I can give this, okay you will be able to access this. So let me get this link and send him in the chat box. And let me know if people are able to access it. Now, how this is unique? This is unique because this name Rajesh is unique. Okay. And then S3 AP South 1 and Amazon.com and A1. Okay. So, as bucket name is unique, okay, our this data is the unique. Now I see people are saying, Prabhupada, this is not access. They are getting some error. Guys, thank you so much. I was checking if you were able to access or not. So very, 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 very important concept. When you upload any data in S3, your data is private. Your bucket is private by default. And no one else can access other than you, owner of this object. Here you see, owner of this object or root user of this account. Other than that, no one can access this data. Okay. Now, how can I access? Okay. For that, what I need to do. Okay. As I said, I can access it, but you people cannot access it. Okay. I can go ahead and click here, open, okay. Now, this is the URL. When I click on the open it, okay, it was pop up. Now you see, I'm able to see it. But you people cannot see it because you don't have access of it. Now, if you see the difference, okay, let's see here, okay. If you see this URL here, guys, so this is URL what I have given to you, right? This URL, you see the browser, right? This URL, you all people got here, right? But other than that, in this URL, if you see, there is something else as well, okay? You see content response, right? In line, a important things, XAMZ security token, okay? And this you see something here, okay? So this is because this is pre-signed URL that what I got to access it. Okay, guys. So, I am able to access. Let me copy this URL and send in the chat box and let me know if you people are able to access it. Okay, it's not getting copied. Just give me a moment. Cut it. Copy and paste. Anyway, guys, somehow this is not working. Okay. So now you understand this is 
private and only I can access. Now you will ask Praveen, how do you make this public? Right? So, guys, try to understand this. How do we make this public? So, let's go to the bucket. Okay. Open the Rajesh Jain. Okay. And here, if you go in the permission, okay, here we have option C called block all public access. Okay. So, and this is on. Friends, try to put a special attention here. You see, block all public access, this is on. It means by default, when we are creating this bucket, right? So, block public access is on. This is not allowed. If you want to make this public, so what we need to do, we need to go here and edit, okay? And block all public access is on here. Disable this, okay? Save the changes. And let's go ahead. It's asking, are you sure you want to make it public? I am saying yes. Confirm. No, I need to type in a small. Okay. Confirm. Sorry. Confirm. Okay. And type. Now this is become public. Guys, can you go ahead and try to access now and let me know if you are able to access? No. Guys, again, try to understand here. Okay. Here, just we said, okay, now this bucket could be public, but this is not public anymore. Guys, why this is? Okay, why this so much restriction? Because in the past, okay, due to some intentional and un unintentional, people use this service, okay, and this service they put petabyte of data, right, and they made it public accidentally and they get exposed. Okay, there was a lot of issues because of that. AWS makes sure this data will not be okay. This bucket. If you want to make it public, you have to follow certain steps. Okay. Now, next, what we need to do? Next, we need to add a policy here. Okay. We need to go ahead and we have to add a policy. Okay. In permission, scroll down. We have to add the bucket policy. Guys, understand. I'm going to explain very important concept. Then, how do we get this bucket policies? Okay. So let's go here and we will type here S3 host a static a static website okay scroll down and setting access and i will go ahead and copy this policy okay let's go here to our bucket policy edit it Okay, and here put this policy. Okay, now here try to understand right here effect is allow principal is all anyone. Okay, then get object and here we need to give the bucket name. Okay, so let me give the bucket name here. Okay, and save it. Now, guys, go ahead and try and let me know if you are able to access it. Yes, now you can access it. Okay. So, now I made it publicly access to everyone. Guys, but one thing you need to understand here. Okay. This is called a resource policy. This is called a resource policy. You can ask, Pabin, what is the difference between? Okay, guys, again, let me go back a little bit, okay, to set the context. So, this policy is basically, policy is, okay, we know this customer minus policy and IM minus, and the AWS minus policy, right? This, 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 
You are right. I'm going that. What I'm going to explain here. So here, on top of this AWS managed policy and customer uh, customer managed policy, we have another differences. Okay, a IAM identity policy and the resource based policy. There is a difference. There is a things concept called identity policy and resource based policy. Try to understand this policy and this policy you attach to any identity a user. Okay, so this is called identity policy. Okay, identity policy. Okay, because we know who is identity. This person is identity, right? But when this policy we attach to any AWS resources, okay, then this is called a resource policy. And difference is <clears throat> in identity policy, you will not have this principle. You will not have this principle inside your policy. If you explained, right? If you remember. When I was explaining you, we had only effect, we had the action, and we had the resources. We don't have these principles, right? Now here we have principle. Okay, so principle means is we are saying anyone, anyone, this bucket, adjacent bucket, and slash you see slash this strict means anyone anyone any data sorry any data in this bucket can be accessed from anyone from the internet okay so in a resource-based policy you will see the principle and you have to explicitly say okay who can access okay guys if this is clear give me a thumbs up Exactly. Principal stands for the user. It could be AWS service. It could be anything. Okay. Someone is many people saying explain again, repeat again, once again. Very good, guys. Let's understand this. Okay. So a policy, a policy when we attach to any identity, an identity is okay, is me, you, right? Then this is called identity policy. In identity policy, you will see, okay, we have in identity policy, identity policy, we have everything like effect, action, and the resources. Okay, there's no principle because to whom this is going to attach, okay, this person, okay, has this permission, effect is allow, okay, action it what action, and the resource means at what resource, and here Rajesh slash this strict say all object in this bucket, right, but when this policy will have this special attributes, this is called, sorry, ah, this is called principle okay then it's become a resource based policy and then this policies you need to attach to any aws resources okay which you are going to give the access okay so now this is called resource based policy guys clear give me a thumbs up Perfect. Super. <clears throat> Guys, there is many more things we can discuss in the S3. Okay. Let me show you a couple of features. Okay. Let's scroll down. Okay. Let's go to the bucket once again. S3 bucket. Right. Here we have the permission okay this is a concept called s3 versioning okay so versioning means if you want to maintain multiple version of your 
data okay you can enable versioning so aws will maintain multiple version of your data okay we can use tag to arrange the data inside your bucket okay and you want to classify this data so you can use the tags okay encryption encryption means when you are storing your data in the s3 right your data is getting stored somewhere in the aws data center right if anyone go and they plug their hard drive right in the servers right and they will be able to access from their computer right so if you want to encrypt this data so to access this data they need this they need to decrypt it okay so you can encrypt this data okay so that's where you can use encryption okay okay perfect guys now this a class thing is coming classes now let's quickly recap where we are okay what we supposed to cover here right so in storage introduction bucket and object next is the storage class okay now let's understand what is the storage class here let's go to the AWS console okay and let's try to upload new object here okay add file then let's upload this and if you scroll down in the property okay you will see here storage class okay and by default we see there is a standard class okay i'll go ahead and upload this okay my data will get uploaded in the standard class okay now what is this class okay <clears throat> guys aws has seven class okay not seven eight class okay but one of them is not used it's got deprecated so we have seven class a standard okay then intelligent tiering then a standard infrequent access then one zone infrequent access then glacier three types of glacier then the reduced redundancies is not used anymore okay it's deprecated so what this class <clears throat> When we store our data in the S3, okay, you have to select this class, and this class is depends. Okay, this class is this classes has the different features, okay, and also different cost. This classes is has different features and different cost. Okay, so if you take this classes which is on the top standard intelligent tiering okay in okay standard infrequent access okay so these are a little bit costlier as compared to the classes which you see on the downside okay why price is lesser here because of it has the different features okay now let's understand these features here in a standard okay you should store the data which is frequently accessed okay and you want millisecond within millisecond store it and want to access it so this kind of data will be putting in the standard okay now next is let's skip this next is okay a standard infrequent access this is a standard class but if your data is not frequently accessed okay if you want to access maybe once in a month okay but still you want millisecond latency then you can use a standard infrequent okay so as you are accessing okay in infrequently okay so they store data in different types of the hardware and because of that this is little bit cheaper as compared to a standard what you say okay <clears throat> Now, next is one zone is infrequent access. Okay. So here, this is infrequent access. This is, let me get pencil, bold pencil. So this is infrequent access. Okay. But it's stored data in 3D ability zone. 
okay but here in one zone infrequent access this is infrequent but if you want you not need this that level of the durability okay and you want the lower cost you can go for one zone infrequent so your data will get stored in only one ability zone so again this is cheaper as compared to a standard and this is again cheaper as compared to the standard one okay guys if this three is clear give me a thumbs up when you should use a standard when you should use a standard infrequent access and when you should use a one zone infrequent access perfect <clears throat> now here you see right we are deciding based on okay how frequently this data going to be accessed right based on that we are moving data from a second okay yes let me get my pencil okay so now here right we are moving data deciding the storage class based on the access frequently access right this frequently access right frequently access correct now if you say Praveen I don't know what is frequent frequency of this data access then how should I decide which class should I go for should I go for the standard or maybe a standard infrequent access or one zone infrequent access at least one thing is clear here between these two right so if you want to store data in only one ability zones and want lower cost we can go for one zone infrequent access right but what about I don't know based on the access pattern then what what I will suggest means what storage should I use right for that okay you can use this storage class called intelligent tiering so what this do based on your data access pattern okay based on your data access pattern okay it will move data your from infrequent access to the frequent access okay so internally it has some mechanism okay it's take care of your data movement access and it will move your data from here to here okay or maybe here to here and also maybe here to here okay and then it will lower down your cost okay so this is intelligent okay it's take care of this kind of intelligency for you okay but there is a small cost when you do all this maintenance guys i hope now you are clear when you should use all these four classes if yes give me a thumbs up <clears throat> okay perfect <clears throat> now let's move down a little bit and understand these other three classes okay so first of all understand glacier what is glacier glacier is the place where we have the ice right and place where people don't go okay so this is called glacier right <clears throat> so glacier is the class where you store the data okay and you access maybe once in a year or maybe after five years okay so this we use for your backup and archival data and some sort of data because some compliance region you have to keep it for the next five year next 10 year and you need to access maybe sometime when needed right so those kind of data go in the glacier okay so use glacier when you want to use as a archival okay for the backup long term storage okay we use glacier so glacier initially if you go five six years before there was only two types of the class okay one was the standard then was the glacier then we had this reduced redundancies reduced redundancies okay but this is not used anymore in between customer has some different requirement okay and aws come up with the new classes that's why you see all these classes okay 
So what happened over the time? Again, people says, oh, I want to use Galaxy, yeah, but still, I want to access my data a little bit frequently. Okay. So here you see, if you want to store your data in the Galaxy, yeah, but you want instant retrieval. Okay. Maybe within millisecond. So you can go for Galaxy Instant Retrieval class. Okay. Now, if you want to again store in the Galaxy R, okay, but you are not sure. You want to access in within a month or maybe within six months or maybe within hours, right? You can go for Glacier Flexible Retrieval, okay? And here you can access data minute to hours. Okay, again, this will be a long life, but you can access within minute to the hours. So when you try to access this data, it will take times. You cannot just access within a second. Okay, but here you can do in the millisecond. Okay, so then you can go for the glacier. Third is deep archive. Okay, so this is where you store the data. Okay, and you will access maybe once in a year. Okay, and when you try to access it, it will take couple of hours to face this data this is ideal 5 to 10 hours okay to face this data so again if you go here right so this is low cost low cost okay this is higher cost okay so now i hope you understand which glacier class we use one when Guys, if clear, give me a thumbs up. There's a couple of questions I would like to answer here. Okay. One question was coming from the Yasim Mirja. Okay. What is basic concept behind intelligent tiering? Yasim, that what I said, right? So in the standard class, okay, you store the data and access frequently. In standard infrequent access you store the data and you access this data access pattern is infrequent okay it's not frequently accessed then here you are not know when you are okay when you know that right, this is infrequent access data you can put you put in a standard infrequent access but when you don't know what you do right then we use intelligent tiering so what is to it's monitor your data Okay, and based on the access pattern, it will move from one class to another class. So this is what it's do. This is one question from the Saurabh Malik. I have application. If I store my all needed data, such as image for the background of my application or my application logo, can I use S3 bucket link to the access the image in HTML file directly? Sort of exactly you can do that. What type of object can store in the S3? Read this, read this. So object is nothing but data, right? So data like images, okay, videos, files, okay, which you want to upload it, okay, and you want to give access of it. So, write once, read many, okay. So, when you upload once a data in the S3, okay, you are not able to edit it there. If you need to edit it, you have to download it, you have to edit it, again, you have to re-upload it. Okay. One question is from here, okay. If I delete an S3 bucket and create S3 bucket with same as a delete bucket, is it possible? Once you delete it, it takes some time to again this bucket name need to be appears, okay. It takes some time, okay. But you can if meantime no one is getting your access. If we can extract data in millisecond, why do we need a standard in the glacier? If, okay, exactly. So this for the cost, right? See, 
even okay a standard is more costly as compared to the galicia okay if you want to see in one to millisecond okay but still this is your archival kind of data okay so this those data you can move in the galicia okay so this the kind of hardware they what they use this is a different okay if you go in the type to understand how this see pen drive disk right this is a different technology what used to store this data okay so this is a different techniques okay this tape you see tape library if you are not coming from the this background you don't know okay so they used a the different storage hardware to store this data again this is cost varying from there okay guys so if this is clear so far give me a thumbs up Okay, guys, perfect, super. Now let's do one thing. Let's quickly recap where we are with our schedule. So, as we have discussed, we covered almost everything what we supposed to cover before our lunch break. Still, we have one hour. This is nine twenty-four for me. It means this is one p.m. for you, guys. Would you like to some break? And would like to join at maybe instead of four pm, three pm. Then we'll wrap up our session at the six pm. Or do you want to continue for the next one hour? Because next session is very very important. Okay, and yes, and it will take take some more time. Okay, and what I believe for the India people, this is something lunch time, right? perfect super 3 pm is good 3 pm is good 3 pm is good okay guys thank you so much okay so let's do one thing let's break here okay and exactly we will join so join this meeting link is open here okay and join at 3 pm okay see you all at the 3 pm same meeting link okay 3 pm I'm going to put a slide here and slide I will type. We are going to join at the 3 p.m. Let me share my screen. Okay, guys. So let's break now. Okay. And see you at the 3 p.m. Bye bye, guys. Thank you so much. Have a take break. Relax. Okay. Have some foods. But please do join. As I said, I'm not going to share these recordings. But people who's going to join me okay i'm going to give you access of the recorded concepts okay and also have some good announcement for you okay that what you are going to get at the end of the session okay so join and see you in next two hours bye bye guys